Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And welcome to my stop on the very first oh-so-inspired collaboration of 2024. I hope you'll stick around to learn who inspired us this month, see what I'm going to create, and find out how you can hop along and see all of the other creators' videos. The other day, I reintroduced the Oh So Inspired collaboration and gave you a chance to meet all of the artists. If you haven't yet watched this video and you want to after you hop along today, I do have it linked in the description box below. The gist of it is that each month, the collaboration team takes the same inspiration piece and creates something based upon it. As you hop along today, you're going to see how the single inspiration piece, which I'll show you here in just a minute, has inspired all kinds of different creations. This month, January 2024, we are being inspired by Fiona Witten, who is at Oakfield Crafts on Instagram. The card that we're taking inspiration from is up on screen now, and I will have links to the blog page that showcases this card in that description box as well. For my project today, the things that stood out to me were those hexagons over on the left. The first thing I usually think of when I see hexagons is like a beehive or honeycombs. And since I've been wanting to use the new Just Because Clear Stamp of the Month from Spellbinders, I will be using that set along with the coordinating dies for the bee theme. And to bring in those hexagons, I have chosen the honeycomb stencil from Tailored Expressions. I did my best to find some inks I thought might make a nice honey color for the background, and I chose pineapple and, fittingly, honey from Tailored Expressions. Once you're done with my video to see what the other artists have created, you can use the playlist link in the description box below. This is going to be your one-stop shop for all of the videos in the hop. So if you can only have time for a few now, all you have to do is come back to that playlist page and resume from where you stopped. I know that everybody would love for you to stop by, see what they created, and leave them some love. Let's get crafty! To get started, I'm going to be doing some ink blending and stenciling onto a piece of pineapple cardstock that I cut to four by five and a quarter. I'm also going to be using today for the first time my Altenew stamp wheel as a mat to hold down my cardstock and my stencil. To get started, I'm just going to use the inks by themselves, and I start with the lighter color, the pineapple, and I blend in from the edges almost all the way to the center of the piece of pineapple. Now you might be wondering, why are you ink blending pineapple on pineapple? But this way I get a couple different shades of that same color, and I don't have to start from a white base. It already has that color on it. Now once I have good coverage with the pineapple, I'm going to bring in the honey, and this time I'm focusing more on just the edges of the cardstock. Now while I am thinking about it, I would like to know, for those of you who use the Altenew stamp wheel or waffle flower grip mats, what do you do with ink blending? Because I found that my brush, it was kind of getting stuck right on the outside edges of the cardstock on the photopolymer. And so it resulted in a lot more splotchiness around the edges. So anyway, if you have any tips, please let me know in that comment section below. Once I had good coverage on my piece of cardstock, I brought in my tea towel and I cleaned off my blending brush. And this is because I'm going from that dark honey back to pineapple when I bring in my stencil. Just like on the original inspiration piece, I only want my hexagons on kind of the left half of my card. So once I get the stencil in place, which I have it about center on my piece of cardstock, I brought in some post-it notes, tore them in pieces, and I did a little bit of masking. Now with the hexagons, this was super easy because of all of those straight lines. Once everything was in place, I used those same ink colors in about the same areas, and I added an extra layer. 
So the pineapple, it went all the way over to the post-it notes. And with the honey, I kept it once again right along the edges. And here is a look at the big reveal. I set this piece to the side to give it some time to dry, and now it's time to do the stamping. I originally planned on using the Thanks for Being So Sweet sentiment along with the two B's, but once I got those three stamps in place, I started looking at the coordinating dies that came with the set, and I realized that there wasn't one for the Thanks for Being So Sweet. Because I knew I wanted all of the stamped pieces to have a white border, I did decide to go ahead and switch up the sentiment, and for this I chose Just Be Cause. I got these all set up on the scrap of white cardstock, prepped it with my anti-static powder tool, and then I inked it up and stamped it twice with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. I wanted to make sure it was nice and juicy for when I poured on the powder. Now after pouring the powder on, because I was going to have to do some more heat embossing, I set this to the side instead of melting the powder. Even though it had a little bit of time to dry, I did want to make sure with all of the ink blending on the background piece that it was completely dry, so I brought in my heat tool on the low setting and just hit it with some heat. Now I know that I'm using clear embossing powder for this piece, so it wouldn't really matter if the embossing powder stuck to where I didn't want it to, but I just like to be in the habit. Now for this piece, I'm going to use the biggest stamp from the set. It's the piece that's kind of like a U shape, and I'm going to set it up once on the top of my piece of cardstock. I again inked it up, stamped it twice, and then I rotated it and did the same thing so I have a full border on the background. If you're enjoying today's video and you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would take a minute to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. This way you'll be the first to know when I have a new video posted. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Once both pieces had been stamped and powdered, I brought back in my heat tool and set the embossing powder on both of those. I always love the magic and the extra shine that embossing gives. Off camera, I die cut the bees and the sentiment, and I wanted to add just a little bit of extra color to the bees. So to do this, I brought in my Olo markers, CG1 for the wings, and YO2.3 for the bodies. I also prepped a honey card base by adding a piece of white cardstock to the inside, and on the bottom I cleaned off my blending brush using the stencil to give a little more decoration and color. After I added the ink blended piece to the front center of the card base, I played around a little bit with the placement of my die cut pieces. Once I had that figured out, I brought in my Barely Art liquid glue to adhere down the Just B cause and the top right B, and then for the B on the left, I wanted it to be in one of those little hexagon blended areas, and I also wanted to pop it up. So I brought in some mini foam dots, added those to the back, and got it popped up on the front. To finish the card off, I brought in gold mixed gems from Spellbinders and added five around that focal area in the center. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired to create today's card. If you did, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to visit the other artists on the hop by using that playlist down in the description box. I will also have that playlist as an end screen here in just a few seconds. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, 
I do have some links in the description box below.